In this presentation, we're going to look at process handouts. So far we have seen two types of assets. One was the address space which is the most important asset. Second was the binary loaded into the address space. And the third type of asset I wanted to discuss is handles. So coming back to some of the basics, what is a process? Process is isolated compartments, isolated from other processes isolated from kernel kernel is the upper 2gb and lower 2gb is the actual user space so those 2gbs in a process is isolated so if you are isolated from everything else how will you get things done so process is a box so if you are in a box you can do some of the things in the case of a process, you can add two numbers. You can execute the add instructions or multiply, division, all those simple things you can do. But how about accessing a device? For example, accessing a file. Network, you have to send some packet to the network. The answer is handles. So handle is not an address of something in the memory. It is not a direct address of something in memory. It is a number. In many cases, it is a relatively a small number. With that number, normally we get to reference a data structure which is in kernel. We'll see the details shortly. Now uh, let's get the concept right. So have you ever gone to a small retail shop where you cannot touch anything, but you can see those things in the shop and you can point before you buy. So in this case, you are a program running in user mode and you are doing a request for accessing an object in the kernel so kernel is a privileged region where you don't have direct access so handle is the mechanism by which you are telling which object you need access to and kernel won't give you simply access kernel will check a lot of things before giving you access your privileges permissions all those things comes into the picture in this case here is an example of a privileged resource being asked to the kernel by someone who doesn't have privilege and the access is denied. Now let's get a little bit more concrete. What is handle? Handle is a number obtained from kernel as a result of calling some Windows API like create file for example from user mode or kernel mode is a way for indirect access to kernel data structures from user mode. Handle in user mode represent a structure or an object in the kernel mode. For example, you have called fopen and got a file object, file pointer. That file pointer has a handle, file handle. So that file handle points to a structure called file object file object is a structure which is in kernel which you cannot touch 
from the user mode. File object is a generic structure, although the file system also keeps file objects. There are other things also are file object. For example, a socket, a pipe, etc. So this is an incomplete list of handle types in Windows. File, uh, we have discussed any file to access from user mode, you need to have a handle. Token is more or less like an ID card for a thread. Thread is a handle which we're gonna see in the next presentation. It is another asset of a process. Process, process is an object in kernel we have seen e process block for each process so if you want to access that um, you need to have the handle to that process mutex semaphore io completion ports all these entities you are seeing here are kernel objects when i say kernel object it has a structure corresponding C structure object present in the kernel memory, kernel address space in the upper 2 GB. Sometimes it is called the kernel object, sometimes it is called the executive object. I have seen different terminologies. But one thing uh, you have to understand is they are in the upper 2 GBs and they are C structures. Handle APIs. So, how do you get these handles? So we, we talked about fopen to get a file handle. Um, fopen internally calls create file. So create file is the API which actually returns a file handle. Like that you have create process, create thread, create mutex, create semaphore. Normally you pass a string to the object if it is a named object. You normally pass a string but yeah in the case of create process create thread you don't do that so it depends on the object so once you have created you can use that handle in multiple different ways depends on again depends on the handle type and in the end after using this handle normally you close handle to tell the system that you are done with that particular resource or object you are holding handle to. Now uh, let's see a quick demo. So this is a process explorer here. So to see the handles of a particular process, select that process in process explorer then go to lower pane view handles or you can press ctrl h so i'm going to select a process you have to run process explorer as administrator in case you wanted to see the handles of a service or kernel itself. So currently I'm not running Process Explorer as administrator. So I won't be able to see those handles. So I have a couple of Chrome instances running here. So if I look, I can see the handles. It has open uh, different type of handles. So this is a directory. This directory is not the file system directory, but it is the object namespace directory. Don't worry about it. I was just mentioning it. So these are file handles. So this file handles will have associated file object in the kernel. This is a registry key handle. So there is a registry key associated with it. This is a session object thread. So these are the thread handles. A little bit more detailed information about a particular handle can be obtained using a kernel debugger. 
So whichever process you want to switch, switch into that particular process. So let's select a process. I'm selecting a random process which is a search UI. So I'm going to switch my context into that process. Now what you can do is you can do a bang handle. So this will display all the handle associated with that particular process both in kernel mode and in user mode. So we will get into the details of this a little later not in this presentation but a couple of things so this is a handle this is, is this is a number which is visible to the user mode and uh, this is the object which it is pointing to. So for example, this in case, in this case it is a token. So you can do a bang object. So its type is a token. So you can do a bang token as well. So this is a win obj from sys internals. So this is the object manager namespace you are seeing in kernel. These are the objects available in the system right now. And theoretically you can get handle for all these objects which you are seeing right here. These are named objects. So this is the name of the object. You can access that particular object through this particular path. So more about Windows objects and handles later. For the time being we are going back to our presentation. So we have seen this demo. We have discussed that handles are being used for accessing kernel resources or system resources from user mode. But couple of resources, couple of important resources are not used through handles. Memory is a very good example. So to access memory you are not using handles. To access CPU again you are not using handles. GDI objects or GDI handles are very different from the handles which we have discussed. GDI handles conceptually it is the same thing but the code path which handles GDI handles are very different especially from the security perspective. So we'll discuss this probably when we discuss our display in Windows but a file handle is very different from a window handle for example. That is a point I'm trying to drive here. That brings us to the summary. Handles, it's a number. It represents a structure in the kernel, a resource in the kernel. It is one of the main gateway to access kernel structures from user mode in a secure manner. Most resources of a process is accessed via handle. That's about the presentation. Now, reviews, comments and suggestions I would like to take from one single location. So if you don't mind, I would like to follow this particular pattern for the reviews and comments. 
Unfortunately, it is not really useful to me if you update the YouTube comments as YouTube is just one way we publish content. Now, if you think you need more personal attention or have some in-depth doubt or need some more training, please feel free to follow these links. Also, please refer someone if you think they can benefit from similar trainings. All services are available online as well as direct classroom training. So that's it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.